Matt Donovan, congratulations, finally graduates from um, deputy training school. <laughs> Uh, he, he's a man of the uniform now, so uh, his thing is going to be trying to live up to that legacy that Elena wished for him, but also really believing like if there's going to be one person in this town who can help protect what you know innocent folk remain, it's going to be me. And he takes that role very seriously, uh, and and will put his own life at, at, at risk many times trying to uphold the integrity of that. Legacy. Lots of tears. Um, I can tease that the beginning of the sh of where we are is a tease, you know. Um, it is a tease in and of itself. We're going to be playing a lot with the narrative this year. Uh, it won't necessarily be playing out linearly. We're going to we're going to you know revisit some things about our past. We're going to kind of show some hints about a future, um, and by future I mean like a couple years, not like the Matrix. Um, and we're going to be playing things out in present day. So. It, Part of the beginning of the season is uh, in the first episode is kind of figuring out which is which. What do you say about uh, Lily sticking around the season and then also how that applies to Enzo and what's going on with him? Well, you know, Enzo's entire thing has been he's just never really had a place. You know, that's why he attached himself so deeply to Damon when they were imprisoned and, and takes disloyalty so, so personally because. He himself is, you know, very loyal and is looking for that kind of return loyalty. And and I think he sees that in Lily he could have that and he could have a family and he could have a core group of people that believe in him and that want him to be there. Um, and, and I think he just wants to know if they will if they will be as loyal to him as he would to them. And, and certainly, you know, with Lily especially, like... She, you know, she sired him, she made him, and and is is she going? Thank you. Is she going to live up to the responsibilities of that relationship, or does he need to stay on the side of the heroes um, and 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 forsake this family that he might have been a part of? Matt, Matt has never been particularly um, fond of the supernatural element in Mystic Falls, but that, that seemed to reach new heights in season six. Is that something that will come into play in season six? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Matt Donovan, congratulations, finally graduates from from deputy training school. <laughs> uh, he, he's a man in the uniform now, so uh, his thing is going to be trying to live up to that legacy that Elena wished for him, but also really believing, like, if there's going to be one person in this town who can help protect what, you know, innocent folk remain, it's going to be me. And he takes that role very seriously uh, and, and will put his own life at, at, at risk many times trying to uphold the integrity of that legacy. Now, are the heretics a bit bad this season? Or the heretics um, are our entry point to the big bad. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you guys have got uh, well, there's two Vampire Diaries shows, Vampire Diaries original. Yeah. DC superheroes, they've got three shows. And Could you ever imagine doing a third show set in this universe? I, you know, yeah, the answer is yes. And then the answer is God, no, never, ever. <laughs> but it's funny because, like, you know, I never would have thought that the Vampire Diaries would have a viable spin off until I met the originals, you know, and it and had more to do even with the actors that we cast than it did with the characters at first, you know, they, they were so good, we wrote more for them, and then they popped, and, re, you know, suddenly took up so much space that they earned their own series, and so, if something like that were to happen again, I mean, sure, when I look at the casting of the heretics, and I say, oh, they're interesting, could they be their own show, I, in the back of my head, I'm like, that could be cool, and then the other back of my head, I'm like, are you out of your mind, you don't even think like that, so, it's one of those, like, We'll see. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I don't. I don't think I could actually do four shows. That's, I'll be very honest about that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, Bonnie. Bonnie always has, of course, been you know been the savior, been the salvation of 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 these motley group of idiots, and um, and now you know it. It's born out of both the sense of obligation that you know she she needs to um, have she needs to feel like her life matters you know and um, and also because this friendship with Damon has gotten so strong that like 
she would lay down and die to protect him, um, not just because she cares about him, but because Elena cares about him as well. Um, so, she, you know, she she's going to, you know, fight tooth and nail to make sure. And he is actually going to fight tooth and nail for her. And so um, the, there's a great bond there between them that I think is really exciting. And, um, and watching Bonnie explore more and more about her magic and the roots of her magic and what she is capable of and how many different kinds of magic there are out there uh, and stuff that's nasty and a little dangerous. She's going to open a door into that world almost from a studious point of view, you know, with Alaric trying to, you know, figure out who knows what uh, in our in our world about the different levels of, of things that a witch could do. I know. Can you have... <laughs> that poor time. guy. I know. No. Yeah. no. <laughs> One day, yes. Well, this season is all about him trying to find his happiness, um, and he starts in a decidedly unhappy place. Um, and and if if things go well for him, um, even unconventionally, there's a chance that he could find something to make him happy, and it's just going to have to you know involve keeping a very open mind. <laughs> Yeah, Lily and Damon and Stefan have this incredibly contentious relationship, and frankly, it's born out of the fact that they're pissed at her for not loving them enough, you know? And she spent so much time loving them and missing them that when she finally let go of that, it's like she put up a cement wall that she can't see across anymore. And so I think she is self-aware enough to understand how shameful it is to not, you know, as a mother, love her own sons, but she doesn't. Uh, and and this season is a little bit about the first half of the season about them finding their way back to each other for better or worse. Whether they're, they're going to break through that wall and 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 rebond, whether she'll bond with one and not the other, whether they'll have to take her down, their own mother, we'll see. You know, but it's um, that's a, an interesting emotional triangle that we'll be playing with in the first chapter. Um, <coughs> Bonnie and Damon hadn't had much interaction before season six. Are there any? character dynamics like that in season seven, two characters that we haven't seen spend that much time together that get a lot more time together in season Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of who and how. Um, <laughs> well, oddly enough, we'll see Matt Donovan sort of fighting side by side with uh, Stefan and Damon. Not necessarily at the same time, because <laughs> Seven and Damon are in like direct opposition about how to handle Lily and the heretics. But Matt is the person in the middle whose singular goal is to make sure the town stays safe. Is finding himself teaming up with the very people that he sort of wishes he could get rid of, because um, they uh, they share that goal of making sure that the heretics don't destroy their town. He's a new sheriff Forbes. The new sheriff Forbes, exactly. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Guys. Thank you.